I'm talking to uh, Dave Gibbons, a uh, comic book artist. You've worked in the field um, for about 30 years now. Your, yeah. um, your first work, I was reading in Studio Space yesterday, mm -hmm. um, various titles for uh, IPC, but it was your work from 2000 AD that first sort of brought you to people's attention. Yeah, I mean, um, I started in 1973, and I really kind of broke in by hanging around the offices and doing lettering. And then I got some, I heard one of the artists was going on holiday and I, I filled in doing some work. My really early work actually was for DC Thompson, okay. which I did through an agent. And that really was my education as an artist because I'd send them pencil pages mm. and they'd send them back with a critique or maybe with an overlay with uh, a redrawing suggestion. And uh, although DC Thompson comics are very kind of traditional, they really did teach me the nuts and bolts of clear visual storytelling. Okay. Um, but yeah, 2000 AD was very important to my career and to a lot of my contemporaries. We were of the generation that wanted to do comics. Before then, a lot of the people who worked in comics really aspired to be magazine illustrators or novelists. But our generation, which I think was the generation that had grown up on the first imported American comics, our life's, life's ambition was to do comics. And 2000 AD was the perfect vehicle at the perfect time. Well, I mean, I've read um, some of your uh, Road Trooper strips when they are reprinted um, in books by uh, Titan. Right. And um, I think they still stand up very well now because there's something about, you've got a kind of um, a clarity to your work, but at the same time you know when to use heavy shading for mm -hmm. impact. And I think when it comes to these sort of future war strips, there needs to be that mixture of clarity and chiaroscuro in order to bring some kind of realism but the same grittiness to yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I generally try and adapt my drawing style. I mean, obviously, there's a basic way I draw that you can tell yeah. it's a Dave Gibbons drawing. But I, I do try and use different materials to suit what I'm doing. Um, Road Trooper was drawn with a really cheap platinum fountain pen. And I used uh, bits of tea towel, rough tea towel, to put background texture in it <laughs> and, keep, and put a lot of solid black in it to make it heavy. So it has got that gritty, sort of dirty look. Watchman, for instance, I drew with quite a hard dip pen and then put in hatching afterwards mm -hmm. to give it a kind of a, a very clear line look to it. Other things I draw with a brush to make it look smoother. Um, so yeah, I always try and, um, you know, kind of horses for courses. Always, and, and, and frankly, it's not only an artistic decision because of a look that I want, it, it stops you getting bored with just drawing with the same stuff all the time. It gives you a, a new challenge, a, a different way of working, you know. So yeah, that's the that's thing that uh, I'm, I'm really pleased you noticed it. <laughs> so I thought I might be the only one. <laughs> no, no. And so when, um, when you've got new scripts that you're working on, perhaps in a genre that you've not worked on before, do you think, oh, I might try this technique because it's something I haven't tried, but it might suit this particular kind of story? Yeah, and I mean, not even uh, just the tools that I would use to, to, to draw it, or the amount of black, whatever, but, but the way the page is laid out as well. Mm -hmm. I mean. Um, you know, you can look at any page of Watchmen and you are in no doubt that it's a page of Watchmen because it's done in that nine pound brick, which uh, yeah. I suggested to Alan at the beginning as okay. a, a way of formalising it and really, you know, using a very elementary framework to contain all the complexity. Um, the same with the originals, which I wrote and drew later. That again, it's in black and white, it's on a different kind of grid, a different lettering style. Again, every page is unmistakably from, from that book. Martha Washington, which was a kind of a wild, crazy future, mm. scary, uh, funny romp. I did in a much more anarchic layout, more mm. kind of poster layouts, bleeding off the page and everything. Watchmen wouldn't have worked if it had full page bleeds mm. or if it had you know, wild panel arrangements. It just looked like that kind of comedy. So, yeah, I'm always very aware of giving everything a distinct character as far as I can. Um, and you've worked in both black and white and then in comics that have been coloured. Do you do colouring yourself or have you left it to other people? Um, I, I, um, I'm not a natural colourist. Okay. I mean, I can colour. Um, again, I mean, I, my training was uh, working for DC Thompson and mm. re reading books about art. So I've never been trained to paint. And the frustration always was that I, I had an idea of the way I wanted to think of it colour. But with my somewhat limited abilities, I could never actually get it to look like that. As sometimes I've been more successful. But I used to use an airbrush and I used stick down colour that Lettretone used to do, and coloured pencils and watercolour and inks. But it wasn't really until uh, computer software it got cheap and quick that I really got the kind of colour effects that I, I wanted to get. I don't colour a lot of my own work. 
because it's really quite time consuming. By the time you've penciled it yeah. and inked it to colour it again. But I'm very keen on having control over the colour, and I've been lucky enough to work with uh, John Higgins, who's a wonderful colourist, Angus Mackay, who yeah. coloured a lot of the, the Martha Washington stuff, Robin Smith, who coloured the first set of Martha Washington. And I've always done it in the way that I've given them colour notes and then sort of had a look at the work they've done. And basically, I'm quite happy with just mm -hmm. what they do. I would only make a correction if it was for continuity of story purposes. Mm -hmm. So that seems to be the, the happy medium. But I do keep my hand in, and I do occasionally do a, a, maybe a cover that I coloured on the computer. Um, I, I did, not, not to go on, on about colour too much, I did a, a sketch for somebody the other day in their mm. sketchbook, and they wanted a full colour sketch, mm. or a finished drawing actually, a commission piece. And I, I got my paints out of the drawer, and so on since I used them, they were all just solid lumps <laughs> of rock in the jars. So I had to go out and buy some more colours. And I actually had to teach myself again how to put colour on, you know. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an area that, that um, um, I don't really dabble in very much, but yeah, I enjoy it. Because um, I remember particularly with Martha Washington, I'd read uh, Angus McKee's books that he'd just done as, you know, doing all the art before. And he has that kind of um, heavy metal aesthetic going on with his work. Yeah. So when it came to doing um, uh, those strips, it sort of added an additional kind of European look to the art, but at the same time, it's Frank Miller's satire on the yeah. American foreign policy. So that was an interesting con contrast between the way it's being written and the way it's being presented. Yes. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, uh, and it's um, it, it kind of makes it fresh because it isn't quite what you expect. And you can, I mean, the thing about Martha Washington, in a way, um, it's a it's a, a, a comic without a genre really because it's kind of science fiction, it's kind of satirical. It got a bit western at one point where she's she's out in the desert. It's a war comic, it's a love comic, a romance comic, you know. Um, and um, we were actually um, we're, we're in the process of putting together the definitive collection because you know there were a couple of mini series and then odd issues here and there and odd stories. So we're going to gather the whole thing together. Um, hopefully we're going to do it as an oversized book in the kind of absolute full house. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I've kept lots of the notes and Frank's uh, um, um, outlines and, and sketches of scenes and things. Um, so we're hoping that's going to be out in uh, 2009. Um, and um, it, it's funny, people who like Martha Washington, you know, it's not a huge fan favourite of the book, probably because it isn't a superhero and it isn't. Um, but the people who do like Martha Washington seem to really like it, so I'm hoping once it's all in one place and it can be read as a coherent story that we'll get more people on board. But uh, yeah, so that's Martha. Okay. Um.